Welcome to the Habitat Podcast, the podcast for wildlife habitat management, hunting strategy, and land stewardship. And now, your host, Jared Van Hees. Welcome to the Habitat Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Van Hees, and we are here to become better habitat managers. I want to first off tell everybody what this episode is about here. We have Brian, my co-host, myself, and our good buddy Lincoln Roan from Packer Max on. We're talking roller crimpers, cult of packers, no-till food plots, and then we get into catching up on our hunting seasons, you know, what Brian's been up to the last month, what Lincoln's been up to, and then my my Illinois trip. We cover all that. So it's kind of a mix on habitat and hunting this week, and, uh, you know, rest assured, we will be getting back into stricter habitat discussions coming up. But it's hunting season right now, and, and we're, we're in hunting mode. So great conversation with Lincoln and Brian. And, uh, you know, it's also Thanksgiving. So I want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of our listeners, um, our supporters, our partners. Um, I'm personally very thankful, uh, thankful for my, my Lord, thankful for my family and friends and, and our health. Um, I'm just thankful to, you know, be here recording this podcast, uh, you know, with you guys. Thankful for my listeners, my my supporters for the Habitat Podcast. Brian and I are extremely thankful and grateful, and uh, we, you know, we like to sit back today and, and just remember all that. So I hope you guys are, are thankful for the great things in your life, and uh, have a great holiday here. Now... Couple things uh, we have, like I said, Lincoln on It'd be a great conversation. But what we're doing right now, something new, we're giving away a Habitat Podcast American Flag hoodie and a pack of Afflictor broadheads. And what you need to do to get yourself in those, it, there's four surveys below the show notes of this message. I'm working with. Uh, some students up at Central Michigan University. I'm an alumni there. I'm working with one of their marketing classes, and we are helping grow this podcast audience. Um, and I have multiple teams in this class working on this project for their final grade. So these surveys are surveys that they put together and asked me to share with our audience. I said, of course I will. So below there are four surveys, um, one and two Survey 1 and 2 are for one group, and Survey 3 and 4 are for another group. So if you guys don't mind filling those out, that would be super helpful. They're very quick, very brief, and just help us determine, you know, next steps from here. And then if you want to be entered into the drawing itself, you have to either go over to our Facebook page or our Facebook group, Habitat Chat, and join there and then just comment on the survey post saying, done or whatever your favorite thing is about our podcast, you comment on that post, letting us know you filled out the surveys. Like I said, I'm giving away a brand new Habitat podcast, American flag hoodie, and a pack of Afflictor broadheads. Um, Guys, these hoodies are also for sale at HabitatPodcast.com. I got a shipment of about 40 of them in. So if you want one prior to it getting real cold, now's the time. Again, that link will be below. Now, I want to talk about Exodus trail cameras. So, Exodus has been a supporter of the podcast since earlier this year, and they've been out of stock on cameras for a while due to supply chain issues, high demand, etc. But I got an email today from Chad over at Exodus that they have cellular cameras called the Render back in stock. There's 250 units that you can apply the code BFCM25 and save 25% off an Exodus bundle. Now that bundle is the camera itself, the solar panel, and the security bundle. So there are stock, there is stock on Exodus right now for the trail cameras. I would hurry up and go over there, check them out. Brian and I have been using those cameras this fall, and my cellular videos that I get shot to me via cell cam are awesome. I've shared a couple of some big bucks here in Michigan working scrapes and whatnot. And I just, I never knew you could have a cool high quality video sent via text. I thought that would eat up your, your data, um, kill the battery, et cetera. Well, with a solar panel package, 
you're good to go. So um, again, that's code BFCM25. Head on over to ExodusOutdoorGear.com. They have cameras back in stock. So hit that up. Guys, we also want to talk about Afflictor Broadheads. Like I said, I'm giving away a pack of those. Um, they're K2, four-blade, fixed-blade broadheads. Brian's killed a deer with them this year. I've killed two deer with them this year. I use the uh, fixed EXT two-blade, 155 grains, and they are tough heads. Um, I don't just shoot things just to shoot them. I want to make sure that they'll blow through a shoulder blade into the dirt eight inches where I pull them out. That's where I want my broadhead to be. I don't want it to be hanging out the other side. I don't want it to be sucking the deer. I want two holes and sharp fixed blade broadheads from Afflictor. I've proven to myself that they work. So guys, head on over there. Um, great, great company. Great guys over there. They're, you know, made and assembled here in the U.S. And uh, you can resharpen the blades. You can buy new blades. You can buy more heads after you shoot them. Whatever you want to do. But as long as your bow is tuned up right, they fly great. Mine, I mean, I shoot mine out to 60 yards. No problem. Haven't even made a rest adjustment. Um, so the, guys, those are uh, Afflictor Broadheads. Check them out. Tell them Habitat Podcast sent you. Now, that's pretty much it for today. Again, happy Thanksgiving to y'all. We really love you guys. Appreciate your support. I, for one, again, am very thankful for everyone that comes back to listen to the Habitat Podcast. And, um, yeah, just just satisfied, happy, grateful, you know, happy to, happy to be doing this. So uh, I also want to thank Packer Max Cult of Packers, Killer Food Plots, Michigan Whitetail Pursuit, The Squirrel at NutPlanter.com, Morse Nursery, and Realtree United Country Land Pro, Lake States Realty and Auction. Guys, enjoy your holiday. Enjoy your family and friends. Be safe. Eat a bunch of turkey. Let's go Lions. They're not going to win, but I'm hoping they do. And uh, hang in there. And we'll be back with some more Habitat-related content real soon. Good luck, guys. Take care. All right, guys, we are back. Another episode of the Habitat Podcast. We have a couple familiar voices here today. Brian Hallbly in the truck on his way down to the lease. How you doing, Brian? Doing great, buddy. Still uh, deer season and blue skies and sun shining, so can't complain at all. Rock and roll. I saw you had to shave your uh, your rut beard off, huh? Back back in the real world now? Yeah, yeah, back in the real world. Boss doesn't like beards. We can have mustaches, but if you think I look goofy with a beard, you should see me with a mustache. You got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> Uh, and that, yeah, I shaved mine off today too, and uh, back at it. And and then we got a uh, guy who's been on here a few times, very good friend of mine, our very first partner at Habitat Podcast, Mr. Lincoln Rome from Packer Max. How you doing, Link? Hey, hey, doing good. How you guys doing? Good, good. Doing great. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah, sunshine, blue skies here today too. Gorgeous. I was gonna. Um, we're supposed to get started recording about ten minutes ago, but you had you were busy selling a Packer Max to a lucky gentleman. Yeah, yeah. I had a, had a guy from uh, um, Atlanta, Missouri, called in, and I was talking with him and answering some questions, and and uh, he placed an order. So that's always a good thing. Keep, yes, sir, keep the ship job. afloat, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's that's worth a ten minute delay right there all day long exactly so, so well yeah, we got him fixed up and we're ready to, we're ready to podcast man heck yeah well we've all been we've all been busy busy hunting uh the last probably month or so um you know i've been recording podcasts and vehicles brian's in a vehicle you know we've just been all over the place and so we're, we're <laughs> happy to to have a little normalcy here and and have a good conversation i know Link, uh, why don't you tell us real quick who you are and, and where you're from? I know the listeners have heard it, so let's not spend a ton of time on it, but sure. we'll hear about your company, and then we'll get into kind of you know what you've been seeing and hunting and doing the last couple, four weeks. Sure, sure. Yeah, so, you know, Link and Roan, and, and uh, I'm the owner at Packer Max, uh, line of call to Packers, and uh, like you said, we were, I think we were your very first partner in uh, 
proud of that and it's been a great relationship and uh you know we've been we've been uh, uh it's kind of our off season right now and uh we came out of i mean just an absolutely incredible 2021 season and um man uh, the business is just it's just taken off and and uh we get we get great you know feedback and and we're just uh just feeling really blessed and uh, uh you know a lot of a lot of people struggled for the last couple of years with this whole covid thing and and uh, i almost think of anything it, it has helped us you know with uh, people getting back outside and and working on their properties and and managing and food plots and and uh, so yeah it's uh, it's been crazy crazy ride for two years so that is that is phenomenal to hear and you you know all the any supply chain issues that you may have had which yours weren't too bad you just had some slight delays and whatnot um i think you switched molders if i'm correct but you got yeah. all that hammered out too right like you're 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 back in the game yeah yeah we we did we ran into a couple of a couple of snags uh for you know throughout the the season last year or this you know this past summer um uh you know we had we had some you know some it's like one delay caused another delay caused another delay and then we had um you know we had some uh, with our with our old mold uh company you know they had employee employee issues you know they couldn't keep anybody uh, well they couldn't hire anybody so they were only able to run one shift and you know that put, kind of put a kink in us and and um with the absolute incredible demand for the product when you, you know, when you delay shipping or, you know, bringing your materials in, uh, yeah, it kind of snowballed on us a little bit, but we, you know, we, we, we went out of our way. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big time into customer service and we went out of our way to keep our cup, you know, our customers informed, um, along the way of the delays and what they could expect. And I think that, was huge uh in curtailing any problems because when when somebody knows what to expect before there's a problem you know that that is it just it really helped us you know stay ahead of the game with people you know knowing that hey at one point we were you know we were six weeks out and but when you communicate that with people and they know that going in um you know uh, and then and then if we beat you know, if we beat that lead time, then that's even better. So, um, but yeah, going into this year, you know, we're, we're looking ahead. Um, you know, we switched molders uh, midstream and that, that helped. We were able to, to keep up with our demand. And, um, I, I ultimately, I feel like, uh, I don't, I, I feel like it's a, even a better product. Um, you know, we're, we're able to take the, the, the drums, we used to have to, you know, work on them a little bit when we'd get them, but now we, I mean, we're able to take these ones and put them right in a box and ship them out. We don't have to do anything to them. So it's, it's really been, really been nice. That's and it was a, great a to hear, you know, man. smooth transition. So. And, and what are your lead times now, Link? Um, well, the gentleman that, uh, I actually sold another one earlier today and that's shipping out today. So, we got, go. I don't know. We got go. We got five or six going out today. My son's been holding the fort down while I've been screwing around. So <laughs> and we got. Yeah, I think we got. Yeah, we got five going out. So I mean, it's you know, if you ordered today, uh, right now, it would you know, it would be a day or two, you know, lead time. So. Well, I just want to compliment you on getting your you know butt back in gear in terms of the business, and and not that you were out of gear, but everybody in this world is dealing with supply chain issues right now. And you found a way mm -hmm. to, to nip that in the bud. So yeah, great, great yeah, job. It, honestly. You know, I mean, yeah, it, it was, again, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't easy for, you know, uh, you know, even the metal, you know, you, 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 you know, what used to take, you know, three weeks to get now it takes six weeks. So, I mean, you just got to adjust and, and look ahead. And we used to order them, you know, 200, uh, you know, 200 units at a time. Well, now we're ordering 400 at a time so that, you know, uh, it, we're, we're just, we're just kind of ramping up and, um, kind of, you know, attempting to stay ahead of it. So. Well, 
Well, that's awesome to hear. I wanted to also touch base on your newest product, the the roller crimper. Um, yep. I tested one of those out. I picked it up this spring from you and did all my plots with that this fall. I think all except for one. And um, I tell you what, I didn't have any real drought issues. I know we had some timely rain, so obviously there's an yep. asterisk, but I didn't have any real uh -huh. drought issues to speak of at all. Uh, what, what kind of feedback are you hearing from, you know, the listenership, from your customers, from people out there with this new product? And are you planning on continuing that into 2022 here or, or what's the story there? Then we'll get into some deer. Hunting yeah, stuff. yeah, definitely. For sure. Um, we've, we've gotten excellent feedback on the crimper. Um, we've, you know, it was a brand new launch and, um, you know, there, there's, there's, uh, just a couple of changes that we're going to, you know, improvements, um, you know, we're going to call it the, you know, the 2.0 as the, the next production run, um, you know, just minor things, um, like we're, you know, we're probably going to put a support bar across, um, just to kind of lock everything together a little bit better because what we, we were finding, um, if you didn't, when you assembled it, if you didn't pull in on the ends and then tighten everything up, we were getting it. There was just, because there has to be some, some play, um, you know, some tolerance. And so when you, if you didn't pull in on those top, you know, the, to, to hold everything together and then tighten up all the bolts, we were finding that the ends were tipped out slightly. And that made it a, like if, if you went on an incline or like your, you know, it made it so that that, that end piece could possibly pop off. And so, you know, and again, out of all the testing we did, you know, never happened once, but we also, you know, tighten everything up that way. And so, um, but we put that in the instructions and, you know, that is, that is definitely help. But I think if, if we, if we add a support bar across, I think we'll just eliminate any of that, you know, any of that issue. Um, so, you know, and again, like you said, it's a, it's a brand new product. Uh, um, you know, there's going to be things that you're going to, that you're going to come in, you know, come up against. And it's just a matter of making those slight changes and, and moving forward. And then, um, but it wasn't a huge problem at all. It was just, you know, just a couple of isolated incidences. Um, but the overall performance of the thing, guys really liked it. I mean, it really, it really, uh, worked well. And, um, you know, even on a couple of the, the plots that I personally did for a friend of mine, you know, in the testing, uh, you know, we had, a, when we, we'd go over it about, you know, 80% of it, I'm going to say stayed completely down, maybe 20% maybe popped up a little bit but it still died, you know, it still terminated it. Um, so, I mean, it, it was just, and then you could, you could either drill into it or you can seed into it. You know, uh, some guys I know, uh, were, were crimping and then they'd use their, their grain drill and then, or, you know, or, or a bean planter and, you know, and plant into it, which worked really well too. So, yeah, but yeah it was, uh, it was a good, uh, you know, it was a good, uh, a good run and, and we're going to continue on and, and, okay. uh, yeah, this, this whole no-till thing, I'm telling you, we're going to run into, I, I, I'm going to tell everybody right now, go buy your glyphosate now, go get it because we're going to have problems getting glyphosate. And if you, if you, that's one thing that this, you know, this product is going to help to minimize is the need for you know, weed control. So, um, uh, so that's going to be bode well too. And it's going to cut down on your fertilizer costs because you're putting all that nutrients back into the soil uh, and fertilizer is going to be going through the roof here. And, and if you're even able to get it, I'm, I'm told that there could be some serious problems moving forward with fertilizer and glyphosate. So, you know, I've heard the same, aware. yeah, I've heard the same and I've not gone out to buy it yet so thanks for the kick in the butt reminder um yep. yeah just go i mean run to tsc and get it you know whatever yep. we're, we're going to actually stock it in our store this year and so okay um you know we're trying to we're trying to get you know get ahead of the game and get some bought and get it in here but um you know it's like i said it's going to be it's going to be way more expensive 
Don't yeah, and I know with your crimper, I think what I liked about it the most is just efficiency. Like I don't I don't have all the time in the world all the time. So it's mm-hmm. nice to be able to go in there and and crimp and plant and and move on. Um, especially that new property up north we're gonna be working on, like that's gonna have five, six acres of food. So I have mm-hmm. to really step up my efficiency. And I think uh yep. You know, yeah, it helps for the soil. Yeah, it helps for the fertilizer inputs and and less herbicide and all that. We already all know about all that, and those are great tips, but it also helps you on time. I mean, you can get everything yeah. done in a day yep. <laughs> or whatever, which yep. is pretty cool. So, um, yep. yeah, absolutely. So it awesome. is definitely a time saver, no question. So, but yeah, so overall, you know, the, the feedback was good on it. Um, you know, we, it's just it's it's something that you know so many people i mean let's face it like you you know we're doing smaller acreages we don't we don't have either the means or the uh, uh, ability to have a 70 you know a 70 horse tracker pull up you know tractor to pull a goliath crimper uh there's nothing wrong with a goliath crimper they work incredibly well but not everybody has the means to do that this fills that need of the guy that's got a quad, <laughs> you know, and wants to get into some no-till stuff for his, you know, for, for, for whatever reason, whether it be because that's just how he wants to do it now, or because he's trying to improve his soil structure or, you know, whatever that case might be. Um, maybe it's just the, an efficiency thing that somebody just wants to build a, you know, go in and broadcast into that standing, you know, rye and, and, you know, crimp it and, you know, move on. So, um, it's, it's filled the need and it, and it, uh, is it perfect? Um, it's, it's pretty darn close. I mean, it's working really well. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't ever, you know, when somebody, when I talk to somebody about buying one, I don't ever, you know, over inflame it, you know, uh, inflame what its capabilities are. I mean, it's, it's, you know, there are some limitations to it, but, overall you know it works extremely well so yeah absolutely uh you said people that don't have tractors i i'm seeing even a lot of people that do have big equipment kind of getting away from that for a lot of their plots too and just using the no-till system with your packer max and that, that's mm-hmm. a testament to how effective it is for sure yeah yep yeah definitely i mean i've got you know jake ellinger you guys know him well um you know, he, he came in and bought one of my first ones and, uh, he had really good success with it. And I, and he did it, he, you know, he did a, uh, I believe he did a, either is doing or has done a YouTube video, you know, where the success is on it. And, uh, you know, he had, he had really good things to say about it and, um, you know, worked really well for him. So, but, so, yeah, that's you all. Know, again, we're going to, we're going to keep moving forward with it. So. Absolutely. And that's all that we used at the test farm this year in Ohio and pretty pleased with the first year plots. And, uh, yeah, we're going to keep keep using that method for sure. Yeah. I think, you know, kind of as you, you know, everybody's, you can kind of perfect your own, you know, your own process too, you know, from kind of trial and error too, you know I mean? You can, you can kind of figure out what works best for you moving forward with it and, and, you know, do you want to do a buckwheat in a, you know, rye rotation? Do you want to, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that process because you're going to, you're getting a kind of a double, you know, you're, you're, you're planting your buckwheat into the standing rye. You crimp the rye down, your buckwheat grows, and then you seed your fall plots into that. And then you either crimp it or crush it, whatever the case may be. And then, so you're really getting to kind of getting a double whammy of your, you know, of your, of your, uh, biomass that you're putting back in. And, uh, plus you're, you know, you're doing that much more weed suppression. So, which is going to minimize the need for, you know, glyphosate. So. Yeah. And that's huge. And unlike a, uh, conventional crop of maybe soybeans or corn that's out there all year, you're only rotating the crop once a year whereas with this method doing some buckwheat and then crimping it over in the late summer you're getting a 
a double crop in the same season, which definitely helps the soil yep. for sure. Yeah, yep. It's just, like I said, it's just that much more organic matter going in. So well, I got to tell you, I got to congratulate you on a, another great year in business. And uh, it's really nice to be partners with somebody that not only takes their business to the next level, it, it seems like every turn you're always trying to improve. And uh, we're happy to see that growth and enjoying growing with it. You've helped us grow and we hope that we've helped you a little bit and just want to say congrats yeah. on a great. Well, thank you, man. I, I, I do appreciate that. I, you know, I, I, I take this incredibly seriously. It's, it's very important to me and always has been, you know, as far as even throughout my career, you know I mean? It's, it's, it's important to me that my customers are happy and that we're putting out a good product. And if you have a problem with something, you know, we are on it. And, um, you know, they're, they're few and far between, but, you know, occasionally you run into a problem or, or, you know, I, I, I have a guy when I was in Illinois hunting, you know, he, he called me and I told him, you know, I said, Hey, um, you know, is it okay if I call you back? Like I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a hunting trip. I don't have good service. Can I call you back tonight when I get back into town? He's like, I'm surprised you call me back at all. Like it's, it's, you know, Saturday night, <laughs> you know, and I said, well, you called me with a problem. I need to get you taken care of. So, and you know, but that's just the way I, it's just the way, you know, I, I do this. It's, it's very important to me that, that people are taken care of. And, you know, uh, it ended up being a, uh, you know, he wasn't putting something together quite right. And I just walked him through it and, you know, on he goes and, and everybody's happy. And, and the guy was just, you know, he was just beyond happy that, you know, I took the time to call him on a, on a Saturday while I was on a hunting trip, <laughs> you know, like, so, but, and, and, uh, you know, and yeah, you guys have helped us, helped us immensely in getting the word out and, and, you know, with your testimonies on the product, using it and uh, firsthand knowledge of, you know, how well it works, you know, that's huge. So. Well, that customer service comes through from every angle. I can tell you that because we get so much feedback. People tell us about how easy it is to get a hold of you and how helpful you are. And like I said before, it's it's great to have partners like that. We're really blessed and appreciate you taking care of them like that. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. So cool. where do we go for next year? Any Any big plans on the horizon or kind of just building on what you got going on? Yeah, we're going to kind of build on what we got going on. Um, you know, we're, we're, we, we, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, uh, not get ahead of ourselves, but we've got some, some plans on the horizon. We just moved into this building, uh, you know, a year ago, July, and we've, uh, are, are virtually outgrown, have outgrown it already. And they are building another building right behind us that my current, uh, land, you know, the guy that owns the building. Um, and they're, they're, we're, we're working on a build to suit over there. And, uh, so we would have, you know, a front office and we would have, cause I, my office is right in the shop here now, but, you know, we'd have a front office and, you know, we'd have a production area out back and, uh, you know, a dock, uh, you know, a loading dock, which would be huge. We've got a forklift and stuff and we can load trucks, but, you know, we have to do it out in the, uh, out in the lot and which is you know, uh, not ideal, but this, this new place would have a, a loading dock and stuff. So, you know, we're looking at that pretty seriously. Uh, it'd be a huge undertaking obviously, but it would be that much, you know, more efficient and able to, you know, serve our customers, uh, quicker and more efficiently. And we're also expanding our dealer network. Uh, we are getting, it's pretty cool because we have, we have people, businesses calling us, wanting to be dealers we're not out prospecting dealers uh yet i mean they we've got people from i've got one in florida i've got one in uh you know texas um you know louisiana you know the southern guys are really starting to starting to to, to get on board with wanting to be dealers we got you know three new dealers with Bordo brothers they have three three locations on the east coast um wellsboro equipment you know they're in pa um you know, we've got a bunch of them around Michigan. We got working on several in Wisconsin. So, you know, we're we're starting to expand that dealer network where people. Because I mean, 
you know, I mean, it's a pretty, you know, it's a, it's a, it's not a, it's not a sixty-five dollar product that you're buying. You know, I mean, a lot of people want to lay their hands on it before they purchase it, and you know, this will hopefully make it uh, so more people can do that and uh, and just get it out there, you know, even more. So. Very nice, very nice. Again, well done. I know you had a heck of a, a 2021 with, with all the whatever you want to call it, uh, delays and issues and everything thrown at you. So, again, congratulations, Link. I know I told you before, but tell you again, uh, you, you do a great job. You're a great friend of mine. You're a great person, a uh, great Christian, and uh, that's important to me and, and Brian. So, um, Awesome. Speaking of that, Brian, you are driving down to Ohio to uh, get things topped off for gun season here. Give us a little rundown about how the how your vacation went, how hunting went, and then I want to hear about Link's uh, hunts as well because he was all over the place as well. So, Brian, go ahead and fill us in. And uh, you know, I guess the last time we we kind of are maybe caught up to was maybe early November when I took off. Um, the listeners know about everything probably up to early November down in Ohio. Yeah, so it's uh, overall, I'd say it's been a successful season down there. First year, uh, I got the lease last year, but I think some of you might remember that I didn't hunt it last year. I was still on an old lease and uh, just kind of split it between a couple other guys and just had a couple of cameras out. But for the first season, uh, first off, Muskingum County didn't disappoint. I mean, I, I shared some of the the buck pictures on social media. I didn't share them all, but Jared, you know, from getting the group text, uh, just some of the giants that show up down there and, you know, keeps you in your stand and keeps you sitting still a little bit longer knowing what's behind the next tree or over the next ridge because they're there. And, you know, we had, we had some close calls. Uh, I think Dave had a, uh, probably the best encounter. He actually was able to get a shot. Unfortunately, you know, it starts getting later in the day and you can't see all those little multiflora rose branches and things. And his arrow clipped the branch. And it's unfortunate that he wasn't able to get a good shot on that buck. But um, I had probably the biggest buck that I'd ever seen while hunting at uh, 30 yards. He stepped out. Wow. Kind of, kind of where I figured he was going to step out. Uh, just needed him to take about five to 10 more steps to get into a lane. Cause I made a mobile move on him. Uh, I'd seen him. I think it was the same buck. I had seen him at probably 80 yards, uh, coming off of a ridge. And I, I think he's bedding up in there somewhere. So I made a mobile move one morning and you know, how that goes setting up in the dark. You try to get in the best spot that you can, but you can't be in there, you know, in the perfect setup with shooting lanes everywhere. So when the sun came up, kind of figured where he was going to pop out that uh, I wouldn't be able to get the shot right there, but was hoping he would just continue straight. And that didn't happen. Like, like big bucks do, he kind of stuck to the cover and and went on his way. But, you know, I, I see that as a success. I mean, we get caught up in shooting things and we all love shooting big bucks, but, Man, that gets the heart going when you have a world-class animal like that, that close. And just, it's just a special opportunity to be able to even see a buck like that, let alone have a chance to take them. So I I think we got pretty dialed in this year. Uh, Gun season coming up, maybe we'll be able to even the score. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the property and pretty excited about how things shook out for us down there. And, and how big was that? biggest buck you've ever seen while hunting if you had to guess i'm not the best at scoring him on the hoof but he's just one of those ones where when he turned and faced my direction it looked like his chest was about three foot wide you know just just a horse of a deer uh big (laughs) heavy wide antlers you know i'm sure he was every bit in a 150 class no no doubt possible you know like i said i I'm always conservative on, on guessing on the hoof. So just, just an impressive specimen. Though. And, and, and now that we kind of, you know, have, have seen the lease hunted all over it, et cetera. What are your thoughts for habitat improvements for, you know, this winter, spring, summer for going into next year? 
Well, as you know, and maybe some of our listeners that caught some of the YouTube videos from some uh, clips down there, we don't need any bedding cover. <laughs> so that is, that, they, they talk about the lowest hole in the bucket. That's probably the highest one, So, which, which is a good problem to have because a lot of places – that takes a lot of work and time and money to, to get good bedding. And I don't think we have to really worry about that. So, um, yeah, I'd say food. Uh, we've got a couple of more, uh, gas line and power line openings that, that we can kind of, kind of my thought down there is don't go in there and, and chop up all the, the timber and the cover where the deer are already comfortable. Just use the openings that we have. They're already, relating to them just uh, by the clover and things that the power company has put in there, just, just kind of enhance them and put some better food, fertilize them and uh, take advantage of it from that aspect. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, I mean, of course it'd be awesome to go in there and bulldoze acres here and there and whatnot, but it, it's also, once you go in there, you know, you're, you're, laying ground scent we're making noise you know it was so quiet when i was down there the leaves and everything so it's like and most of the deer sign i saw was actually up towards those wells and those gas lines you know the, the browse pressure was way higher up in those areas um probably you know better vegetation so i, I like where your mm -hmm. head's at yeah and, it, and it's the same story from a lot of successful hunters that we talked to down in southern ohio it's like our buddy Danny Warner, he says, you know, a big mistake a lot of people make in that terrain is like I just talked about going in there and disturbing a bunch of places that these mature bucks feel comfortable in. And once you start pushing them out too often, you know how that works out. So try to kind of yep. stick to that plan and, and enhance what we can around it without getting too crazy. Yes, sir. And then you're going down for gun. When does gun open? I think it's this Head weekend, isn't it? Gun. On Monday, 29th, oh, yeah. All right, and you got the whole crew going down. Well, I, I wish you luck, brother. I wish I could make it. I got to put in some more time here first and, uh, and you know, shoot straight, man. I, I know you don't need the luck, but you'll get him. <laughs> Appreciate that. Hopefully, we'll be able to keep it short. Did you, uh, did you, are you hunting in, P in PA at all yet, Brian, or are you still just sticking to Ohio? I've gotten out a uh, handful of times in PA. Actually had a really good day. I'm trying to remember what day that was. I came home for three or four days. I think my daughter had a high school musical. And I got out one okay. evening by the house and had some really good rutting activity. Had two shooters chasing a doe and a, and a smaller buck bringing up the rear. And, you know, for some reason, the last handful of years, I haven't seen a ton of that hardcore rutting. And uh, it was mm -hmm. nice to kind of kind of catch it again this year, and I got to see some of it in Ohio. So I think the weather played yeah. a huge factor this year, too. We had really good temperatures and never got really warm and uh, seemed to get those bucks on their feet chasing those a lot better than years past. Yeah, that's, that's something I just had talked to my buddy about uh, Sunday when we were down in Illinois. Um, the weather this year was – I mean, in, in, I was all over the place, but by and large, the weather throughout the Midwest was, was very, very, I mean, it was just excellent. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, very helpful when you're, when you're, you know, when you're out, uh, out chasing these guys around, you know, the, if you have weather that's conducive to running activity and that definitely helps without question. So we did have a good year with weather wise. Yeah, you know, it's funny. There's all kind of barometers along the way where we kind of take the temperature of the, the deer season of how it's going. One thing, all the processors in Ohio that I'm familiar with, a lot of them quit taking deer on, on multiple occasions because they were just too full mm -hmm. and, and couldn't handle it anymore, so... I kind yeah. of think that had a lot to do with um, everybody being successful. I'm sure probably some of the economy with people having trouble getting workers probably played into that too. But based on mm -hmm. social media and in the weather, I think a lot, a lot more deer probably got killed. But we'll find that out once the game commissions get uh, their final numbers out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Lincoln, how has your hunting season been the last three, four weeks? I know um, you've been all over the place, too. You were in Wisconsin. You're in Illinois. You hunt in Michigan a little bit. Um, give us a rundown on how your season's been going. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a crazy season. Um, I've, I've been afforded the opportunity to, to get a lot of time in the woods this year. Um, you know, yeah, I started out the first couple of weeks in, you know, early season here in Michigan. And, uh, you know, that was kind of a bust, um, where we're at in New Agle County, Michigan. Uh, it, it, there's some, some regulations in place over the last two years, three years that have absolutely put a world of hurt on our young deer, uh, population, our young bucks. And we struggle epically now. We used to do pretty darn good in, uh, trying to get something that's halfway decent, uh, it has been a, a, a huge struggle. So I think the first three weeks of the season, the biggest buck that I saw was, you know, a spike horn. Um, and I did end up passing up a couple of nice young eight points, um, third, fourth week, something like that. And then I transitioned right from, from hunting in Michigan. I went on the 23rd, um, ish. I left for Buffalo County, Wisconsin. And uh, spent six days in Buffalo County, and um, that was, you know, and again, it was, it was it was a struggle because they were standing corn, which there's almost always, you know, the, the, the outfitter said that the corn is almost always down, you know, mid-October out there. And, you know, we had 100,000 acres of standing corn around us, and we're trying to hunt pre-rut bucks, and <laughs> it was tough. It was tough. I mean, we saw deer. Um, I set my target at, you know, uh, 150. I really wanted to, you know, shoot a clean 150 or better. And I passed up a buck uh, that I saw a lot of younger bucks. I saw the oldest buck I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it was a known seven-year-old, and he was just an old warrior. And he had, he had, you know, all of his right side was broke off, you know, all the tines were his left side was just a, you know, three and, but just massive old deer. So that was really cool to see. Um, and then I had about midweek, uh, I had a buck come in chasing a doe. Um, I guesstimated him to be about 145, and I just, I just didn't think he was there. So I let him go. And, um, talk to the outfitter later and he's like, man, you probably should have shot that deer. He said, you know, I, I don't know. That might've got you where you wanted to be. And I'm like, well, you know, whatever. I got a couple of days left yet. So, so anyway, um, long story short on that one, I left for Illinois because I was getting daylight pictures of a big one we had down there. And I left on that Friday and uh, that day, one of the other hunters in camp shot that deer and ended up scoring a 152. <laughs> so, wow. so that, yeah, that I, I literally passed up a 152 inch buck, which in Michigan would never, that's, I've never even seen a 152 inch buck that I know of in Michigan. And so it was hard, but you know, I didn't think it was there and I was close, but, um, so I ended up leaving Buffalo County with, you know, without shooting one. And he invited me to come back on a late season hunt over his, uh, over standing beans. And, uh, so I'm, I'm probably, you know, if we get some good cold weather, I'm going to fly back over there and, uh, and take him up on that. So, but then I went right straight from Buffalo County, Wisconsin to our lease in Illinois, uh, because I had daylight pictures of a, of a buck that we had from last year. That was about a hundred and probably 155 inch three-year-old and this year he's probably he's get he's definitely going to grow his boon um as a four-year-old and i knew the time was going to be limited as to you know when he's on his feet so i flew down there i skipped the last day of hunting in buffalo county i climbed in a tree on friday evening and i was in a i was it was an eight hour drive i i was rushed i didn't bring my ozonics. I went right from the truck to the camo to the tree. And uh, about an hour and a half later, 
I'm, I'm, it's, it's really weird. I'm haunting a creek crossing that's right by one of, an access road on our lease. So I, I'm literally 65, 70 yards from a, from an access road. And people look at me when I'm sitting in the tree when they drive by and they're like, what the heck's this guy doing? Well, that, that spot is absolutely one of those spots that looks ridiculous, but it's, it's money. And so I'll be danged if, if that big boy doesn't, he's on the other side of the road, parallel on the road. He gets in behind some thick stuff. I grunt at him. He turns and he comes right on a string to me. Biggest buck I've ever laid my eyes on while hunting. Uh, I mean, he's just a specimen. I think, I think you've probably seen pictures of him, guys. I don't, maybe you haven't, but yep. um, he's a mega giant in my book. And walking right at me, um, got to 33 yards. And I don't know if the wind swirled or what, but he stops and he looks kind of his natural moment when he stopped, he looked me right square in the eyes. And I'm sitting there, I use a crossbow, love him or hate him, whatever. Um, had the, you know, had the, had the uh, crosshairs right on his chest. And it was either, I mean, I made a split second decision to take a frontal shot and I shot and I hear the arrow hit crack, you know, sounded great. He turns, he runs, and um, I was waiting for him to pile up. I'm thinking, man, if I put an arrow right through the center of his chest, he ain't going far. So I get down, look at my arrow. There's no blood on it. Fat. Well, there was blood on one fletching. Um, I started looking for blood. I find blood, so I went back. We gave him some time, gave him four or five hours, and because I did not like the way the arrow looked. And long story, we ended up tracking him for four or 500 yards and lost blood. We got a picture of him on the other end of our lease, which I didn't think it was him at first. Then looking at the picture while we're kind of tracking, I realized that might be him who went down to that camera. And sure enough, there was blood right in front of the camera. And, um, I just, I just, you know, he had gone a long ways. Um, we basically we grid searched. We did everything we could possibly do. We gave up. Um, I felt with the way the arrow looked that it was, you know, it was a marginal, you know, it was a flesh wound. It wasn't, you know, anything that was going to kill him. And I'll be darned if two days later he doesn't show up on camera again chasing does and working scrapes. So um, I hit him high in the shoulder. I don't know if he started turning when I shot or what, um, but I was devastated with that. I was. I was, you know, <laughs> after passing a 150, you probably shouldn't have. And then I, I leave early to go hunt this deer and have an opportunity and I blew it. And I was just, I was devastated. And although I was felt really good after getting pictures of him on the hoof. So continued to hunt the deer. I ended up, I ended up shooting, a, um, a, uh, I, again, I don't, I'm going to have him aged, uh, with it, sending the tooth to the lab. But I, I believe it's a super old deer and five and a half inch bases, eight point. It was a beautiful buck, um, you know. And I'm I'm super happy with the deer, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the the gross boon that I had been chasing. So, and then he, uh, I came back and hunted Michigan for a couple of days with my dad for gun season, and um, saw some pretty decent Michigan bucks. You know, passed up a couple little eight pointers and. Had a good time with my dad and uh, headed back down to Illinois for their gun season and had some really good opportunities that just didn't pan out. Um, and then I had a, a last opportunity at the big boy. The last day I hunted another stand that I'd saw two shooters in that morning, no shots, um, had, had the big boy crossed the field of another stand that I had been hunting for two days in daylight. So I got a picture of him going across that field and obviously I'm in another stand. So missed opportunity. And then the last evening I'm sitting there and I have two does go through an opening and I glassed them with my binos. And all of a sudden I have, uh, the big boy steps out into the opening 
and I transitioned back to my gun at that point, and he was already through the opening, and uh, he went down into a spring, took a drink, and he was behind this wall of brush I couldn't shoot, and then instead of following the does that stepped into the next opening, he turns, and, and like you said earlier, as big bucks often do, he turned and went away, and the does actually came back to him. And so if he would have followed the does, he's 75 yards, Thompson Center Pro Hunter, 12 gauge, probably game over, but he didn't. <laughs> so, no, so my wolves boy. continue with that deer. So, and so hopefully, yeah. and then he went, yeah, he circled around and my buddy ended up getting uh, a shot at him and, and uh, no blood, no hair, no nothing. And so we believe he's, that was a clean miss. And so I'm, uh, I'm supposed to go down to Ohio for their shotgun season, but we're, we're having a new house built and we were just informed that we're going to be closing on it tomorrow. And I've been home four days since October 23rd. And my wife has <laughs> been incredibly patient and I, figure I better get our stuff moved into our new house before I go back on. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, or I, or she may be living there by herself. She may not let me move in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to miss the first part of Ohio's gun. And then I'm going to go back to Illinois for their second shotgun and try to try to close the deal on that big boy. So, He's a special deer, man. He got under my skin, and and uh, <laughs> it's all I can think about now is that freaking deer. So it's ridiculous. It's like a sickness, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no doubt, no. we're definitely sick. That's for sure. Yeah, you know, and it's just like like Brian said earlier. You know, I I was I was I was distraught, man. I mean, I had, I mean. Uh, to have an opportunity like that at a deer like that, I was, uh, you know, a lot of guys, so I know Chris Brackett pretty well and, you know, he's been through some stuff and, you know, whatever, I don't believe, I believe in second chances. And so I, you know, I've, I've given Chris a second chance and I, I've gotten to be pretty good friends with him. And I called him and I said, dude, this is what's happening. He's like, man, he's the best of the best. You just gotta, you know, slow the game down. And, you know, he's like, you just just try to slow the game down. He said, "The good news is you're getting in front of big deer." <laughs> you know, he said, "Not everybody can get in front of big deer," and so true. You know, so I'm, I'm I, that made me feel really good. You know, um, you know, he's like, "Don't change a thing. Keep doing what you're doing. Just try to seal the deal." He's like, you know, when you're talking deer like that, you know, they're a different, they're a totally different breed of animal, and you know, the fact that you got two opportunities at that deer is, you know, incredible to begin with. He said, one is, you know, saying something, but two is ridiculous. And so he's like, just, you know, you'll, you'll close the deal at some point, just keep after it. So I felt, I felt good about that. And at the yeah, end of the day, he's right. I mean, you know, you're, you're getting in front of him. You know, so, and, and then he reminds me, you know, you guys know what happened to me a couple of years ago, you know, when I ended up going, you know, full steam ahead on Packer Max. I lost my job, you know, yada, yada. My lease was underwater that year. And he's like, would you rather go back to that or this? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yeah. so perspective, you know, Absolutely. let's look at the perspective here. You know, tell me, you've been hunting for, you know, 20 some days straight. <laughs> yeah. Poor you me. Know, just be right. Poor me. And, you know, just be thankful. And, and so that helped me a lot. Like, that just it, you know perspective helps incredibly and that, that he put it in perspective for me and and you know i'm getting it it's i've just been very fortunate so anyway well hang in there bud like so, i told you yesterday yeah. on, on the phone when we were talking i'm like yeah you might want to head back down for that second gun <laughs> yep hey, well and honestly after talking to you that that you know, I, you know, and then, and then finding out for sure that we're closing on the house tomorrow. Like, I mean, I just, I, I, I just in good conscience, I can't, I can't leave on Sunday to go to Ohio, you know? And so 
I just can't. And so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take care of business here. And, you know, like I said, I'm probably going to miss the first part or at least the gun season for Ohio. And I'm going to go hit second shotgun down there and, uh, and see if I can get it done. You know, if I, if I do great, if I don't, you know, then hopefully he's 190 inches next year. So. Well, I wish you the best of luck if you get back down there. And uh, you brought up a good point about our wives being patient. All three of us are are uh, very blessed. Oh. Some sometimes I oh. uh, sit there and scratch my head, thinking, you know, what did I do to deserve this? But I'm grateful for it. Yeah, you and me both, brother. I, I, my, I mean, I, I, I give my wife, you know, uh, all the credit in the world for putting up with my my addiction and and uh you know my passion and it and it the, the cool part of it is and it sounds like maybe your 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 wife's in the same way like she accepts the fact that it's it's not what something i do it's like it's a part of me and you know i'm a package deal i'm i'm you know Absolutely. i'm i'm and that's that's part of the package is is you know is my passion to pursue these animals and and yeah. uh, you know she she embraces that instead of instead of resenting it, she embraces it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. I can relate 100%. And, uh, and it's, it's not like an option. It's like something I have to do. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, and that's the same way you guys are like, you know, it's, it's literally a part of you. So. Amen. So, uh, Jared Lincoln, wasn't the only one in Illinois. You want to, uh, walk us through your trip down South there and yeah. how I was, I was just going to say that. <laughs> I, I seem to recall somebody else had some stuff going on in Illinois, too. Nope, don't really want to talk about it. All good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can relate. Oh, man. Well, I saw some blood trails. You had, you had some stuff going on there. Yeah, no, we... <laughs> we we had a we had a riot down there um i go down there my buddy's family owns a little bit of ground and and i hunt with his dad and his brother and we have a good time and uh yeah kind of similar similar story to link's story um in in many different ways uh the first i I headed down there thursday night got down there drove through a blizzard in michigan got down there real late got up friday morning for opening morning and uh i tell you what boys i've had a great year in michigan so i'm feeling pretty good you know and another buck would just be icing on the cake right now and i it's starting to get light out and it's still still pretty dark but i can see a little bit and i hear this you know crashing in the in the woods behind me so i should have waited a little bit longer but I, i couldn't hold it anymore so i flipped my my doe and estrus can and sure as heck, man, this, I look over to my right and this big eight points walking out edge of this field, probably 35 yards away. Um, and it's gun season, you know, shotguns, muzzle loaders, all that. And, mm-hmm. I, and I'm, I'm on him and I'm like, yeah, that's a nice deer. He, he doesn't look like he's not one that made you go like, oh crap. But he was like one where I really had to think about it for a long time. And he, he wasn't he was outside of his ears, but maybe not by much. So I'm like, how, how big is this deer? Am I going to, am I going to shoot a nice two-year-old on morning one of the three day hunt or, or what's going on here? And he keeps looking across this field and, um, I look, I'm like, what's he looking at? And I look across there and there's a, a really dark bodied buck coming right across the field. Feels about a hundred yards wide. I'm in the back corner of it. And all of a sudden they both start puffing up. And they are walking right to meet each other right out in front of me at like 40 yards. I'm like, no way. This is going down. And I, I still can't. I can't really see the rack on the far deer. I couldn't tell what he was. Um, and it was so kind of dark. But he didn't have much mass, so I couldn't see much. Find out later he's a real busted up deer. That's why I couldn't see his rack because most of it wasn't there. Um, mm-hmm. And they went to square up. And the really nice eight point jumped away before they touched antlers. I'm like, okay, so this is a big boy. So I focused on the other one trying to see his rack. And then they square up again. I'm like, Oh, here we go. And then the big boy jumps away. And I'm like, 
what is going on here? Who who's the who's the Mac Daddy here? I couldn't figure it out. And so I'm like, yeah, maybe they're both youngsters. I don't know. Let them go. Um, that was right off the bat, and it was still you know pretty early in the in the hunt in the morning, you know. So made the yep. decision there, and then um, had a two year old come by, two year old point come by about an hour later, and I realized his body was super tiny compared to the other two deer. I just saw my like, God, no, I passed a good one. <laughs> um, just like Link said, you know, pass, pass when they probably shouldn't have passed. And, and my buddy was like, why'd you pass that deer? I'm like, well, I don't know. I just told you all my reasons and so screwed that up right off the bat, but still had, had three full days of hunting ahead of me. And, and I was okay with it at the time. Sure. Uh, well, that night was slow. The next morning was, was pretty fun. I shot a doe. Um, my buddy shot a doe. So we sat together in the blind, had a good time. Just stacking up some deer for the, his dad's a farmer there and, and he wanted some does taken care of. So that's what you sure. do. You take care of the landowner, right? So you buy, I would bought some tags and, and took care of them. And yep. so I got a nice doe in the cooler and Saturday night was real slow. So maybe I think one button buck was all. And then um, Sunday morning, Last morning of the hunt, it was raining just like it was last year. So I went back to that same cedar tree that I sat under and uh, everything was looking to be really nice, just like the year before. And all I saw was a danged old coyote come down. Um, so I smoked her because, again, landowner wants us <laughs> gone. Uh, so I'm, I'm having a blast. I'm firing, you know, firing rounds taking things yeah. out enjoying myself Just shooting like it's your job right yeah yeah and and yeah he <laughs> asked me to do it so i'm gonna do it and and so yeah we're having yep. fun and so then i'm like all right well now it's getting like 60 degrees or whatever it was link yesterday uh sunday down there for the yeah the last it's hunt and, 66 <laughs> yeah and i'm like man my kids are just been calling me every day. I'm like, I, I should, I should probably get out of here. Maybe try to come back second season or something. And I'm like, nah, you know, you're down here. Stick it out. All right. So we made a plan. We, my buddy saw a buck bedded with a doe in this little thicket behind somebody's house. Um, that he has, uh, the land behind his house is, is the families that we're on. Um, so he's like, why don't you go sit back there in that fence line and then I'll, I'll kind of scout around. And if we see him, we'll make a move. And this, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I sat way back on this fence on this field. There's probably a 300 acre field. Didn't think it was that big. Um, it was, it's huge winter wheat. So I'm sitting mm -hmm. way far away from this woodlot, 500 yards away, probably 550 yards away from where I really needed to be. Um, start stalking up towards that that wood lot and um get out there and there's five does in there that are that have already come out of the wood lot so they're they're looking around so i'm creeping up finally they blow out and uh i kept going well i was at the wrong point the buck with a doe is on the next point over which is another 200 yards after that and so i'm just i'm running at this point once i realize i'm in the wrong spot running with my first light bibs on, you know, the solitude, just sweating and dying and like, just couldn't make it. And I'm running I, and I get over there and, um, I get all the way to around the corner and, and the, uh, the buck's gone and there's one doe standing there. Like, huh? So we end up making the move on this brush and making a bunch of noise. And right at last light, that buck scoots out, went and found that doe. And I'm like, oh, I got him. And I put him at right. like 125 yards and he was more like 220 yards or 200 yards. And, and, you know, all the guns you're allowed to shoot in Illinois, everything drops like a tank, shotguns and muzzle loaders yep. and everything else. And so I missed him on the first shot. He runs out again a little further. I put it way up high on him again missing that time too and uh thought maybe you got a piece of him that time but he wasn't acting like it. he ran all the way across the field 400 yards away looking fine so i hung around mm -hmm. the next morning um i was gonna get up really early and drive home and I hung around the next morning until daylight we went and looked in the draw and everything and looked all that night for blood too before we called it a night and no blood no hair no nothing 
uh, clean mist on them, probably what was 145, 150 inch 10 point. So, uh, Man. yeah, so that would have been, I mean, cherry on top of the <laughs> seat. Yeah, that would have been, uh, that would have been amazing to throw him in the Yukon and come home with the two Michigan bucks in the freezer. I'd have been, I'm still happy. Like, I'm not mad. I'm just like, wow, that was the craziest hunt I've ever been a part of and flinging lead at this monster across this field just it was nuts it was cool it was cool um i don't know if i'll be able to get back down for second season i'd like to uh you know the whole understanding wife thing is is really great and i have a very understanding wife but it only goes so far so it's uh (laughs) i'm not sure i'll i'll see what i can do between now and then to do some schmoozing if you know what i mean right right but Yep. It's been a great hey, season so far. Yeah, that's that's cool, man. That, that's awesome. I mean, it, it just is. It's like, you know, uh, yeah, it would have been, you know, like you said, it would have been awesome to take that buck home. But you know, I, I again, I'm, you know, you got you got the opportunities that you know that a lot of people don't get, and so yep. uh, it's, absolutely you know, perspective, man. You know, perspective. Yeah, no, that's exactly right, Link. Uh, at, it was slow after the first, you know, morning or so. Should have shot that first buck. What, what do they say? Don't pass a buck in the first day you'd be happy with on the last. Um, right. There's that, but there's also, uh, you know, you, you can't shoot a monster if you shoot a, a decent one. So I was, right. I was, I was happy waiting. But the the, the part that I yeah. thought was cool was our, mm-hmm. our plan that we made to kind of make a move on that buck. Um, I just sat back in the fence row waiting for the right time and. And then mm-hmm. we, we, we made a move on them and it, it worked, you know, 98% of the way there. I just need to learn how to shoot guns a long ways. So <laughs> that's all. Yeah. I've done that. And I've done that in Ohio. Like it, it, those big fields, man, it, it is deceiving. And if you don't, if you don't have an opportunity to range, you know, a corn stalk or the deer, um, I've, I've flat out, you know, I've air mailed a couple of different times down there where, you know, they're standing in the field and, and I've, let three go right underneath them you know it's like yep. and, then, and then you and then you take a range after it, it's done and done and he's 75 yards farther than what you thought he was so, hey, oh, dude you're, you're exactly right and it's like so that's hindsight being 2020 i'm gonna like you know hook my range finder to my jacket so i can never leave it next to my right you know butt cushion where i was sitting before yep. i started running across the field because that's where it was it wasn't in my pocket that's mistake number one and the, yeah, I mean, if I would have known the range, I, you know, I shot my gun out to 200 yards was feeling good. That was a goal of mine from last year to make sure I can hit something at 200 yards all day. And I could, mm-hmm. and, uh, yep. and I wasn't aiming, I wasn't aiming for 200 yards. So, right. Oh man. But, yeah, yeah. But I had that same, you know, I mean, don't shoot something on the first day. Wouldn't shoot on, you know, I mean, so I was in, I was, I went to Saskatchewan on a bear hunt in September to start the year off and and day one man i'm sitting in the tree and i had i'm friends with the outfitter and he actually sat with me and videotaped my whole hunt and which was really cool and you know i'm we had a, just a gorgeous bear come in i told him i wanted a 300 pounder i want a block head and i want a jet black and he's like you know, he's like, it's a good bear. And I'm like, man, I, I, should I shoot him? I mean, we're literally, it's his first night, you know, like, and he's like, it's a good bear. <laughs> you know, that's all you would say. He would not tell me to shoot or not to shoot, which is pretty smart on his part. And, you know, he just kept saying, it's a good bear. It's a good bear. And, and, you know, he said, it's bigger than the 300 pounder that the guy shot last week. And he's like, it's jet black. It's got a black head. It's a big bore. You know, it checks all your boxes, man. It's the first night, yeah, but you know, <laughs> you may not want you you might not see one bigger than that. I don't know. And so, I ended up I ended up hammering him, and I'm glad I did. It was a, you know just a beautiful Saskatchewan black bear, 310 pounds, dressed, you know, big old blockhead. Um, this is a gorgeous animal, and it's kind of that same thing. Like you know, if I'd have waited, you know, I. I may not have seen a bigger one, you know, and so yeah, shot that's, him on the first day. That's the catch 22. You get into these situations where you're in the greatest places for whether it's deer or bear and 
something decent comes by the first day and it's like, ah, I'm here. Right. I've waited a long time to get to this great place. Do I, do I want to settle for this or should I see what else comes along the trail? But you never know if anything else is going to come, like you said. Yep. Yeah. You don't know. And you know, and that's like, my, like the buck I let go in Wisconsin. I mean, you, you have to be willing to go home, you know, and I think, sometimes to a fault that you know uh, i get a little bit too preoccupied with you know uh how big they are well you know but when you do that you have to be okay with going home without one too you know and you know in illinois you know i passed some great deer this year i mean i i passed probably upwards of 25 bucks and you know i'm talking 130 inch tens and you know, I mean, beautiful, I mean, bucks we don't see in Michigan, rarely. That's right. And, you know, you got to be okay with going home without one if you're going to do that. And so, so I left, you know, an expensive hunt in Buffalo County. I went home without one. And, you know, I, I might, you know, he, like I said, he was kind enough to invite me to come back and uh, for a late season hunt. So you never know. But, uh, Boy, what an incredible place that is, man. What an incredible place. Yeah, and that's, that's interesting, the mindset you see from person to person. I'm in the same boat as you, I, and I've actually become quite an expert, as everybody knows, at eating tags. But uh, I'm, I'm, willing, <laughs> I'm willing to pay for the chance. You know, I, there's a lot of people out there that yep. say, well, I paid for this tag and this hunt, so I'm going to fill this tag, which that's their right to do that. But it's yep. – uh, interesting to see that there's just as many of us that just look at it as hey this is an opportunity as a to get a chance at an animal you you're not going to see at home like like jared said you're not going to shoot a 150 or 160 if you're shooting every 130 you see right right exactly yeah and there's there's other parts of of camp that are just as fun um i saw some monster deer around the area and you know you know illinois is a pretty special place and uh you know my buddy he's a scorer and so we got to see some nice deer and some of our friends shot yeah. last year we were down there and it's just it's a different world and it's cool to be a part of it and and enjoy it and have a couple beers and and just hang out so yeah like you said brian it's you know of course everybody wants to put that big boy on the wall but i'm not that upset about it about missing that i mean i'm upset i missed him but like I had a great weekend. I, I truly did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, the, the buck in, in Illinois that I've been after, you know, yeah, I, I, I want to get him more than anything, but I mean, it's like, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I just understand that, you know, it's kind of like playing baseball when you're, you know, you're a 300 hitter. Well, you failed seven times out of 10. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, you know, some of the best, some of the best hitters in baseball are 300, you know, they fail seven out of 10 times. And so you got to remember that too. And, you know, some of the best hunters out there fail a hell of a lot more than they succeed. That's for sure. Especially when you're hunting, you know, bigger deer. And it's like, I scratch in my head with like this Greg Glessinger with Drury Outdoors. I just, I have, and, and Mark Drury and these guys, I mean, I have so much respect for these guys. Like they're hunting these deer day in and day out and they just flat out get it done and i'm just i'm going how do they do that like i mean i know they have the the ultimate ground and all that but i mean you know there's still there's still a lot of variables involved and i mean you're talking weather you're talking you know i mean sometimes it's just luck you know and you know they put these huge deer down year after year and i can't put you know one booner down to save my life <laughs> <laughs> What the heck, I man? That, I might have to, I, I might have to, we were talking to the, we got to be pretty good friends with the waitresses down at, uh, at a favorite restaurant in Illinois, the Hawkeye. And, uh, I, I said, you know what? I hope that freaking deer gets hit by a car. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that deer. <laughs> oh, Oh, well, but guys. yeah, you know, and then you, you, you think about the, you think about the time that you spend, you know, with, with buddies and, you know, the, 
I'm I'm here to tell you when you when you I, I've never hunted this much in my life in one season and I getting up at four thirty in the morning every morning to go out and chase this thing I'm you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm over that <laughs> let me tell you. I slept till seven thirty this morning. And it felt like I, you know, it was noon when I got up. So, yeah. And then everybody wants to ask you, how was your relaxing vacation? You just want to give them a death glare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. It wasn't relaxing at all. <laughs> like, let's be real. <laughs> oh. Type type two fun, I think they call it. There you yep. go. <laughs> so. Well, Brian, I hope you um, slay those giants down there this weekend. You and you and the boys, or next week, I should say. Um, you know, Link. I hope you make it down for second season. Close the story on Triple X, and uh, and then yeah, I uh, I hope I can crack the code on second season around here because I'll get in the car and go. Um, yeah, but that yeah, was... good luck to you guys. Thank you, know, you thank the... you, thank and, and thank you guys yet. for for hopping on. I hope you all have a awesome Thanksgiving and, and really, uh, you know, appreciate what we're, what we're here, why we're here, what we're thankful for. And, and the listeners hope you all have yeah. a great Thanksgiving too. And, uh, we will be back again next week. Lots to be thankful for. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So hopefully I'll be sharing some pictures of triple X and maybe a big one in Wisconsin yet. You know, you never know. Still a lot of season left, Link. Still a lot of season left. Yep. That's cool. Yep. So we'll get set in, you know, speaking of, you know, giving thanks, you know, we're moving into a new home the day before Thanksgiving, and, and uh, you know, there's there's lots to be thankful for. So. Yes, Amen. Amen. Yep. All right, brothers. Appreciate you. Thanks, Link. We'll talk soon. Over and out. Good rapping with you, boys. Thank you so much, listeners, for coming and listening once again to the Habitat Podcast. We really appreciate it. If you could, please do us a favor. Leave us a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. If you type out something nice, I will send you a free Habitat Podcast decal. If you haven't been to our website, habitatpodcast.com, we have our Habitat property consultation services on there under the land plan tab check out our hp land plans there we also have hats t-shirts and decals up at habitatpodcast.com of course all of our podcast episodes and then we have a new habitat podcast journal where you can learn about deer anatomy and some cool thoughts um you know more of a blog post from us every now and then we'd really love it if you went over to our instagram facebook and youtube found the habitat podcast and please subscribe that really helps us and thank you very much to our sponsors. I'd like to thank Exodus Trail Cameras, The Squirrel at NutPlanter.com, Packer Max Cultipackers, Afflictor Broadheads, Killer Food Plots, Michigan Whitetail Pursuit, Realtree United Country Land Pro, Lake States Realty and Auction, and Morse Nursery. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in once again. Get back with us soon. We're going to have another great episode for you as we become better habitat managers. Mm -hmm.